what's going on youtube back here with another video today in today's video is the moment a lot of you have been waiting for because we are finally going to be tearing down the supercharger setup on our ford lightning for those of you that don't know we have a tvs 2.3 swap that we're doing on our built motor lightning i'll put a link in the description for a video that goes over all the parts we're going to be using but today's video we're going to be tearing this down pulling everything we pretty much can the stock blower all the way down to the intake manifold so we can put our new intake manifold on i also put a link in the description if you didn't see my last video i went over everything that's special about this intake manifold this is extremely custom go watch that video if you haven't already and i'll put a link to the two um I'll put a link to the blower swap we're going to do and all the parts that are going to be associated with this swap. So links in the description if you want to go get caught up and check it out. Today's video, we're going to be tearing everything apart, basically disassembling, putting that intake manifold on, getting that all ready to go. And yeah, so we're going to go ahead and start pulling things apart and kind of breaking this down to get it ready for the new swap. It's pretty simple. Um, I'm probably not going to show everything. I'm going to start with all the simple stuff. We'll pull the intake stuff off, some random lines and hoses, just disconnect some stuff. Um, when you're going to pull your blower, the easiest way to remember where everything goes is it's a little hack that I came up with. Um, nail polish. Go get your wife's nail polish. I'm sure she's got tons of different colors. And what you can do, like say for instance this line here, you want to remember where this goes you put a little dab let's say orange there and then a little dab of orange on the hose use a different color for each hose and thing you want to remember where it goes so you can go back later and just basically say okay this orange goes with this boom plug it in this blue goes with the blue plug it in it's super easy just color code everything and you'll remember where all your hoses go um, of course we have a lot of stuff deleted so we have a lot less to do um, that's why those EGR deletes and stuff like that's really nice really unclutters everything and it makes this a lot easier But like I said, we're gonna go ahead and start doing some simple stuff. I'm not going to take you through all of it or disconnect the math Disconnect our intake get all this little stuff off and then once we get to something a little more complicated I'll come back to you guys and kind of walk you through it All right, so before we get into the rest of the video I want to take a quick second and shout out our sponsor the channel is sponsored by JC Customs CNC Probably the raddest sponsor this channel can have because he makes all kinds of billet parts for our trucks, Lightnings and Harleys, any other platform as well. He can make just about anything you want, sky's the limit, but specifically for our trucks, he makes all kinds of goodies. I'm rocking the JC Custom EGR Delete Kit. He makes those, mid plate spacers, billet mid plates for any blower, any bolt pattern you need, he can make it. I mean, they are really quality pieces, Gen 2 billet door handles, any design you want, any color scheme, he can make it. Go check out his site, link is in the description, and if you use code Debt Life, you can save yourself 10% off your entire order, so make sure you go check him out, guys. All kinds of billet parts, anything you could possibly need, he can do it. Go check him out, hit him up, use the code, save yourself some cash, and also get us some benefits and help support the channel. So. Go check them out guys, link in the description, but that's gonna be it. Let's get back into the video. All right, so we made a decent amount of progress. As you can see, we got the intake out of the way. We took the plenum off, unhooked all these vacuum lines. I'm not too worried about remembering where they go because I'm gonna have to come up with my own routing for the new blower anyway, so I just kind of pull them all off. Plus, I know where everything goes because I've done this enough times, so it's no biggie for me, but we got it that tour the blower is ready to come off. You can see we undid our ARP nuts. I just gotta break this sucker loose. And I want to show you guys this little trick I came up with because mine is RTV down. You might come across the same thing. Maybe previous owner used RTV. I prefer to use RTV as well. Seals up all the imperfections on the aluminum. That's just what I like to do. A lot of people are highly against it and only use the steel OEM gaskets. I like RTV, it works. The only thing that sucks about RTV is getting it to break loose if you ever have to take it apart. So I'm gonna show you what to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do it and then I'll explain it.
Okay, you guys kind of saw what we were doing. Basically what you want to do is take a pry bar of some sort, put it underneath the snout. If you're worried about the paint or whatever's on your blower, put a rag over it. And then just pry that sucker up with some even, really good force. And the RTV should pop loose. It'll take some force. I mean, I had this whole truck rocking. I had to get in the engine bay and push and pull and pry. But put it right underneath this front snout. Shouldn't hurt anything. I've done this a couple times. The RTV should pop loose. The only problem is that we're having right now in our situation, the RTV popped loose on the mid plate spacer and all the blower mid plate and all that stuff is just glued together. So we're gonna have to take that out as one big piece. Basically what we'll do, we'll just take the four mid plate bolts out of the back and pull it up as one big piece off of the turkey pan, lower intake manifold, whatever you wanna call it. So that's all coming out as one piece for now. I'll figure out how to get it apart later. I have heat guns and torches and stuff. I'll, I will get that thing apart. But that's kind of what happens when you use RTV. I've never personally had this issue before. I guess I glued it down really good last time because normally everything pops apart separately and you're able to get the blower off, then the mid plate and so on. But for some reason, everything is sealed together and the mid plate spacer basically popped off the lower intake manifold. So that's all coming out as one piece. I may even deploy the engine hoist just so I'm not reaching in there and trying to lift all that out of there. Um, work smarter, not harder. That's what I always say. So we're gonna go ahead and get to doing that um, and we'll get back to you. Actually, one thing I can go over real quick is we are gonna drain the intercooler. So what I do to do that normally is I pull the lower hose, let it drain out a little bit. And then what you do is you come in your fuse box here. The intercooler relay should be this one here. You pull this relay out and you can jump it to make the pump run. I'll show you when I actually go to do it. And what you do is you make the pump run to pump out the residual that's in the hoses and stuff. That way when you pull this out, you're not dumping coolant everywhere. So we are gonna do that so we can disconnect the hoses and lift this sucker out of there. All right, so we drained as much of the intercooler fluid out as we could. Cause like I said, we're gonna pull that all as one piece. The intercooler's gotta come out with it. Um, I created a jumper wire, like I was kind of explaining before. This relay right here, all you gotta do is take a little jumper wire. This is some 12 gauge wire. And you can see, I don't know how well you can see it, but these two right here you just jump it and your intercooler pump should work it's hard to do while holding the camera um this also was a little nice hack for the track so you can run your intercooler pump in the staging lanes have your fluid moving but see the noise you're hearing is my fans for the intercooler they're tied to the pump so when the pump's working the fans are on that's all you gotta do is jump it together kind of run it for a second just to kind of try to pump some stuff out of the lines to get it as empty as possible. So that's done, fluid's drained. All we gotta do is pop the hoses off, those four back bolts, and we're gonna hoist this sucker out of there. Okay, so it's the next day. It gets dark so quick now with the daylight savings time in the winter time, it sucks. By about 5.30, sun setting at six o'clock, freaking dark already. So I didn't have a whole lot of time, but we also got stuck. Um, this whole thing is not coming out as you can see it's one big piece and it doesn't fit because the intercooler goes so far into the lower intake there's no way it can come out it gets stuck everywhere it ain't happening the firewall's in the way the intercooler bumps against the front of the lower intake it's not coming out as one piece not happening so since this is all glued together with our tv i now we spent like two hours doing that by the way we had the engine hoist out we were lifting and pulling and that thing is not coming out of there in one piece so we're gonna have to take it apart do some good old-fashioned putty knives hopefully that'll work if i have to i have a scraper set and i'm gonna have to go in there and just literally hammer the putty knife in all the way around the blower until it lets loose so i can take the blower out and then get this thing out in pieces um, I'm not too worried about, I know I'm going to get comments, oh, you're going to gouge the surfaces up. It's, it's fine. It doesn't really matter to me right now. I just want the thing apart and out of there. 
Worst case, if I do gouge any of the surfaces up, perks of being a CNC machinist, I can put it in the machine and remachine those surfaces. I'm not worried about it. I know a lot of people can't do that. I don't know if I would recommend using this scraper set. It probably will dig in. Putty knife should be okay because it's got angles on both sides. And if you're real careful, you should be able just to hammer it in all the way around and it should pop it loose. Um, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do. I gotta get this thing apart. Um, like I said, I've never had this issue. I've always used RTV and I have never had everything just sealed together like that. Normally the blower pops off and then the mid plate pops off and I'm good to go. But it didn't happen that way this time. So we're gonna tackle it the best we can and see what we can do. I'm not gonna film this. I'm gonna put the camera down and just get to work with the scrapers and I'll pick back up whenever I get this thing hopefully popped off so we can move on. All right, so I spent a couple minutes messing with the scraper, trying to kind of get it between these two surfaces. Also not happening, but I, did, I was able to break it loose. I'll show you guys what I did. Um, I don't recommend this if you care about the paint or whatever of the blower, but it did work. Basically put a socket, you can see it here, in one of these little, there's like little cavities in the mid plate and was able to use that, put a pry bar underneath, use that underneath the pry bar and pry up on the blower. You can see it's coming right up. So that's what I did. And it popped it right loose. Um, steady pressure, you don't wanna go jerking on it. But if you just apply some steady pressure, just pry it up, it should pop loose. You can see what I'm talking about, the little cavities and you can see it did ding up the paint on the mid plate but at this point i just want this thing apart so i don't care so like i said just use something as a little spacer pry bar underneath there wedge it and then just pry it up so i'm gonna go ahead and put the camera down and pull the blower and then we're gonna undo the intercooler hoses back there we've already drained it and then pull the mid plate and i'll get back to you guys All right, so as you can see, it's very apart. Ended up getting everything off that we needed to. Um, the only problem I'm gonna have now is I have the trick intercooler, you can see. And now I gotta find out how to get the trick intercooler off this mid plate because I also use RTV on that. And there's really nowhere to pry on this thing. You can't get anything in there to pry, so. I'm hoping the heat gun will help, you know, loosen the RTV so I can get it off somehow. I don't really know what I'm going to do as far as that goes yet because I obviously don't want to drop coin on a whole new trick intercooler because, I mean, they're expensive. They're really nice. Don't get me wrong. I'd suggest everyone runs one, but I already have one and I'd hate to have to go buy another one and put the trick intercooler in the 4x4 build. That'd be a huge waste. It's just going to be stock boost, real minimum. So I really don't want to go do all that. So hopefully I can somehow get that separated from the mid plate. Um, let me know in the comments if you got any ideas, but I'm going to take it to the shop tomorrow and see what we can't figure out as far as that goes. Um, next step, I guess I'm going to take off this pulley bridge, get that out of the way, um, drain some of the engine coolant down a little bit, take off this hose, get that out of the way, probably pop the fuel rails, get those out of the way. Just basically get everything off of this lower intake manifold anything that's connected to it just get it off coil plugs uh injectors all that stuff just little by little just disassemble and get this thing apart i'm probably just going to pop the fuel lines and pull the fuel rails all together because we're not using these anyways but we are making progress so i'll come back to you guys once a little more is done all right guys you can see got the lower intake manifold off went ahead and cleaned this surface real good um i'm gonna kind of hurry up with this because i don't want to leave this exposed for too long and risk something getting in the motor but that is all off and cleaned i wanted to go ahead and show you guys these runners man these jdm ported heads they're five angle cnc ported 
these things are freaking opened up huge. This is sweet. Or this is the first time I've ever actually looked at my heads because, you know, it's always been assembled and I've never had this off myself. So I just wanted to kind of take a peek at these runners and man, these things are really ported out. You can see all the machine marks and how much bigger they made it compared to, it's basically perfectly gasket matched. They're the exact size of the gasket opening because stock, they are not. So pretty much these will go on just like that. Um, the only thing I gotta do to modify these real quick, you can see it has this little tab here that's to help locate the lower intake manifold. Well, my spacers on the bottom of this do not have a provision for that tab. So everyone has told me to basically just take a cutoff wheel or something and just grind that off, get just eliminate it and make sure it's lined up the best you can. Um, it's not super critical. I should be able to line it up just fine. Just kind of by feel, by eye. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get this thing back together before it gets dark. And I don't wanna leave this exposed overnight um, and risk something in a, getting in the motor. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this back on. All right, so as you can see, we got everything bolted up and the intake manifold is on. There's our old one down there. And we wanted to get this on because I didn't want to leave the heads exposed overnight. So I wanted to get this bolted up and put stuff in the runners just to kind of keep everything sealed. Um, we got all new hardware and the torque spec is 19 foot pounds or 228 inch pounds. So it's all torqued down and ready to go. And of course we have some stuff ready for the assembly, but that's going to be in the next video. So make sure you stay tuned. I wanted to show the disassembly and the tear down. This is really the only assembly piece I wanted to do for this video. And like I said, I just didn't want to leave the heads exposed. So stuff, you know, could potentially get in there. So, but lower intake manifolds on. If you guys want to know more about this lower intake manifold, it is extremely custom and a pretty special piece. I'll put a link in the description. Go check out my previous video. I think it's one or two videos ago, I don't remember, but I did a whole video going over what's so special about this intake manifold. It's gonna be a really cool piece of the puzzle. So super glad I was able to get everything torn down and to this point, so we're making some good progress. But that's gonna be it for today's video, guys. Make sure you drop a thumbs up and like the videos that you're watching. It really helps them out on YouTube. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel for more plenty of lightning content to come and then we're also going to be doing our fx4 f-150 lightning swap so stay tuned for those guys plenty more videos to come let me know what you think in the comments below and we'll see you in the next one guys later